story we're just getting word of from the British uh, Prime Minister Theresa May that she is planning to discuss trade with President Trump when they gather for the big NATO summit uh, later this week. All of this comes at a time as a number of key ministers and just lately now uh, have, have already left her cabinet. I'm talking about David Davis, who's the Brexit manager, and uh, Boris Johnson, the foreign secretary, key backers of a quick um, separation from Britain from the European Union. Theresa May was slow going at this, and that her government could be in some peril to read on all of this because whatever is hurting them abroad seems to be helping or drawing attention to our markets. Here, Forbes publisher Rich Carlgaard. So, Rich, whatever the fears of a trade war developing, their problems for the time being are our gains. What do you make of that? Well, that and just terrific corporate earnings. I mean, you look at technology, you look at energy, there's so much momentum in the market and trade and Brexit and some of these other issues have been put to the back burner. Now, I don't doubt for a minute that these are long-term or longer-term, let's say six, nine, 12 month concerns, that and a flattening yield curve. But right now, the earnings momentum is just trumping everything. I mean, when you go up 25 or 30 percent year over year in earnings as the tech sector has, I mean, that's incredible. So, you know, we know these are going to be pretty good numbers when they stack them up, Rich, and, and they've put aside for now any of the worries about trade, which had buffeted some of the technology issues, had certainly weighed, you talk about the yield curve on financial and other issues. Um, what's real? What's happening today are the concerns prior? Well, you know, the, the market famously, many people have said the market looks out about six months ahead. And if the market is up, it, it is saying that the trade concerns are, uh, you know, not immediately a big problem. Uh, there was a group called the Oxford Group that said that even if uh, all this uh, trade stuff against China does in fact take place, the ding to the U.S. economy would be smaller than thought. Now, all that said, I think trade is a threat, but I have said many times on your show that I think ultimately, because I think Donald Trump wants to be seen more than anything as a winner, that he's going to find a way to win. and and get out of uh, committing some kind of a foolish share. I would not be surprised if six or nine or 12 months from now that Peter Navarro, uh, who's whispering all this uh, anti-trade sentiment into Trump's ear, uh, is the latest to join Trump's hot seat, as so many of his advisors really? eventually do. That's interesting. You know, um, I always harken back to the South Korean so-called concession, where they didn't do much, but they've done more than they have in the past uh, to rectify things with the president. And he counted it as a big victory, which was at least better than what we had before with the South Koreans. So it'll be something like that. Maybe not a huge victory, but something better than what the U.S. had before. And, and he'll, you know, obviously make considerable hay of it. And that'll be that. Yeah, that'll be that. I think that's, that is, that's his modus operandi. He talks tough, but uh, he quietly negotiates. And there are a lot of Republican senators out there, like Pat Toomey of Pennsylvania and others, and there are a lot of Republican governors right now that are worried this trade, um, all this trade talk is impacting their own state's economy, particularly the farm economy. The smart ones like Toomey are not yakking about Trump in the general and, and always criticizing Trump about this or that. He, Toomey's very smart. He's very quietly mounting some support. I think the U.S. Senate has, needs to take back some of the trade authority that the Constitution guarantees it. We shall see, my friend. Thank you uh, very, very much. Uh, the read on a, a pretty confusing market right now, I take today as sort of an example of that.